Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with William Hill, Empire Fight Store. They'll like to be joined by Sky Nicholson. Sky, you're here to pick Maisie Rose up. She's just <laughs> gone through a workout. Um, but first off, how things were you? Big fight announced to be announced soon? Yeah, um, next fight was due to be announced this week. Uh, unfortunately, after it was all signed, sealed and delivered, my opponents pulled out um, with injury. Um, so it's kind of a little bit back to the drawing board. I'm hoping to still be out on the same date. Um, it's a bit of a run out fight, eight rounder, um, but we had a really good opponent locked in, so bummed about that, um, but we're, we're trying to find a new opponent, so hopefully yeah. still be out um, very soon, but yeah. it's boxing. <laughs> I suppose that's just part of boxing that you learn. I was speaking to Maisie, who's obviously just turned over and said, what's the biggest thing you learned in the ring and outside the ring? Because I suppose the outside, outside the ring stuff, it's more mental. When you're preparing, putting the work in, and maybe then something falls through, it can be a bit of a kick in the, you know, kick to the stomach kind of thing. Have you had to sort of deal with these things going through? I mean, you've been quite active actually, so I think you've been quite lucky, but have you dealt with anything outside the ring that's been a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a mental challenge? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been a, a big year of learning inside the boxing ring, inside the gym and away from it. Um, the opponent changes and stuff, yes, I've definitely learned that's part of it. It happened with my debut um, three weeks before I ended up uh, having an opponent change uh, from an orthodox to a southpaw. Um, but it happens, it's part of it. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of extra challenges that you, you kind of, you can't really prepare yourself for until you're kind of yeah. thrown into it. So um, yeah, just taking it day by day, working hard. Because when you first came on the scene, obviously you had the you debuted in America, I believe, didn't yeah. you? And you've boxed sort of all the way around the world. You've been on some big shows. You've been, you know, all over social media. Your profile's getting bigger. Yeah. You had to deal with that side of things as well. Do you disconnect from that side of it? You know, the socials and stuff. I know you're active on there, mm -hmm. but do you sort of like, you do, does any of it, does any of it get to you? You'll see. I'm sure you see messages of a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. But we talk about it. Someone said to me the other week. They see like. 100 messages and there'll be one negative yeah. on it and it'll just piss them off yeah. do you disconnect from all that for your own sanity yeah um it's definitely been a challenging um part of it all yeah. uh, i'm obviously not used to having so many eyes on me um so much more criticism obviously as well um so it is hard i have definitely spaced myself a bit from social media um disconnected a little bit uh, i am still very active in in posting but i don't sit and read comments i don't sit and read dms yeah. um i kind of post and get off it yeah. um for my own mental health uh yeah. i definitely went through a stage where i was reading everything and the negative ones definitely do jump out of you more you can have so many positive messages which you appreciate so much but yeah. it's the negative ones that kind of live in the back of your mind and how did you deal with that have you got a strong support network i know you guys at the ibox are tight you know you've got a terrific trainer in eddie lamo i think's possibly one of the most underrated trainers in the country yeah. by far um, one of the nicest blokes as well but how do you how do you deal with that we see a lot of people saying you know boxings are escape but you have to go home and spend time with yourself so yeah. how, do, how do you deal with that other side of it yeah i am very lucky i have great people around me um i have yeah i have a really good small circle uh people that i trust and um, people that i can open up to about stuff if i am struggling yeah. um but no i've i've been very lucky to to have a really good circle around me here in the uk and um i've obviously got my my close friends and family back home as well who i yeah. who i stay in touch with regularly and um yeah they kind of keep me sane which which yeah. helps i see i think i saw um must have been last year you went back to australia for a little bit surprise your family um how much do you miss back home i know you're on your journey here and let's be honest um, women's boxing is this is the home of women's boxing i mean ebony moved her life to come over here um, and box herself how difficult is that having family back home and obviously you must miss them loads i do um i miss the weather a yeah, lot. I mean, <laughs> I pray for that weather. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I, of course I miss home, but it's, it's, it's part of the sacrifice. Um, I have big goals, I have dreams that I'm chasing that I, I, I know I can make come true. Yeah. Um, I'm exactly where I need to be. I'm working with the perfect team, um, the best team I could ask for or hope for. And um, no, I'm grateful for every opportunity that I've had being over here in the UK and, yeah. and I've, I've taken everything that comes with that in my stride, the, the highs, the lows. Um, my yeah. family, I, I still see them quite regularly. Um, my parents come to a lot of my fights, um, 
My sister recently moved to Dubai, so she's about halfway closer. Yeah, I love um, that. A bit closer than Australia. That's so. not a bad visit either. <laughs> no, it? and the weather's good there. So, yeah, um, yeah like while it is hard, um, I've got a very supportive family who um, who also make the trips to come see me, yeah. um, which makes it a lot easier as well. And um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm exactly where I need to be. You mentioned there you've got dreams, aspirations. I know one of them will be to become world champion. I think everyone's talked about your first year and said there's no doubt you become world champion. It's just a case of a case of when. So if that is one of your dreams, what what's the rest of your dreams? What are your what's your goals? What's your not what your ceiling is, but what where are you trying to get to? Yeah, um, the plan's still to hopefully fight for my first world title this year. Yeah. Um, obviously, it depends what happens with the belts, but if I get myself into a mandatory position, then... With Serrano, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah then, then Serrano, it'll be, the ball will be in her court um, for what happens there. Um, my dreams, my aspirations, um, they've changed a lot over the past year because obviously signing pro, my, my plan was still to go back to the Olympics. I don't even know if that's something I'm still considering now. I'm very focused on, on my pro career and what I'm doing sure. here. Um, it's not completely a no, but I am leaning more towards the pro stuff. Um, I want to be a multi-weight world champion. I'm looking to, to move up in the weights as well. I'm very happy at, at featherweight right now, but uh, I definitely see myself um, at super feather, lightweight even, yeah. um, down the line. So I know there's big fights to make, um, one fight at a time. But uh, I know what I'm capable of. Uh, I know uh, how good my team is that I'm working with, and I, I've seen the growth. I've felt the growth within myself. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for the future. One thing about the women's division is they don't seem to be big fights that don't get made, which yeah. is great. <laughs> um, it's always it's always good to see the fights get made. We saw Maya Baumgartner last year, um, Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall, Taylor Serrano. We're going to see Taylor Cameron. Have you identified? your dance partner for the big moment. Have you looked around? I know it's hard because you're only a certain amount of fights in, but mm -hmm. you're quite well traveled. You've been um, been on some big shows. So do you look in a few and think, you know what, in a year and a half, two years, me and this girl, or potentially me and this girl are gonna bring the house down somewhere because the sky's the limit at the minute and you're yeah. in the game at the right time. You're right. Um, it's. I feel like it's a, it, there's a, a mixed bag of yeah. potential huge fights down the line. I think there's some great prospects in the featherweight division coming through. I think um, everyone talks about Raven Chapman and I being a great fight down the yes. line. Um, obviously, I would love to have that rematch from the amateurs with Karis Artingsall. Um, that's a great fight. Yeah, so there's, there's, and that's just in the UK. Yeah. Um, there's prospects all around the world and um, it, it'll be interesting to see how things play out over the next year, two years, yeah. um, and where we all are in our careers. But I think there's gonna be great big fights to be made and, um, and great talent as well. So it, it's, yeah. it's just good for women's boxing all around. Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron, can I get your opinion on that fight? <laughs> you know what, everyone sort of laughs when I ask them that because yeah. they almost just say, shit, I don't know what to say because yeah. it seems like a genuine 50-50 fight. Mm. Katie Taylor was supposed to fight Saran and went, chuck me the next best thing and the next best thing was and definitely is Chantel Cameron and people have been saying for years this will be her hardest fight if they ever do fight. What do you make of that fight and where, who do you give the edge to? Yeah, I agree I agree with that. I, I don't think it's the next best thing. I think it's a better thing. Um, yeah. I think it's a better fight than Taylor Serrano. Um, it's a harder fight. It's definitely, I, th I think it is definitely going to be Katie's hardest fight. I think um, I've been asked to, to give my prediction a few times and I do, I, I'm the same. I do really struggle. I think it is a very 50-50 fight. I think um, the girl who shows up and gives her best performance on the night will be the one who wins. Um, but if I had to say, what do I see happening? Um, I think we're going to see a career best performance from Katie Taylor, being her homecoming, having the country behind her. Um, if that's enough to beat Chantel Cameron, we have to wait and see. I don't know. Um, but I think we're going to see a career best performance from Katie. I, I know people are saying she's on the slide, this and that. She's. I don't think so. I think we're going to see career best. I think we're going to see her rise to the occasion and find a way to win like she always does. Yeah. But in saying that, I'm not writing off Chantel Cameron for a second. It should be a terrific fight. We're looking forward to being there in Ireland. Look, um, I know Maze is waiting for a lift home, so <laughs> I appreciate your time, Sky. You always give us some time when I see you, so um, we'll catch up hopefully if you're at the Joshua fight, maybe there and yep. at your next fight week. So appreciate it. Amazing. Thank you. Have a good one.